We need to be talking about this team, sort of like how we talk about Fortis MMA. Well, these guys may be further along than Fortis MMA because they have Corey Sanhagen. They have uh, Curtis Blades. They have Justin Gaethje. Uh, they have Drew Dober. They have Neil Magny. And they are headed up by that man, Elliot Marshall, the former UFC fighter, now the head coach over at uh, the Team Elevation squad in in Colorado. He's kind enough to join us for the first time. It's been a while. I actually was on his podcast uh, not that long ago. Now he's returning the favor coming on my show. Congratulations to all of you guys, Elliot, on the success as of late. And thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Ariel. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, you're kind enough to have me on on your show rather, rather the other way. <laughs> no. And you know what I love about you? Uh, crystal clear audio connection there. The video, watch me uh, jinx myself now, but this is how I know that you're a professional. I mean, you come, you come correct. You come with the goods. I wanted to make sure that, you know, you, you get the call from Ariel, you get the call to the big show. Like, you know, <laughs> I gave my, I gave my younger fighters this speech on Friday. I was like, man, some of you guys showed up late to practice. And, uh, man, I know your name's not on the board for cage rounds and yada, yada, but you never know. Maybe it will be today. So you better, be, you know, when coach calls your name, you better be ready to go. Ariel called my name, so here I am. <laughs> well, I appreciate that very much. And, and again, congratulations to you and the entire squad on everything you guys have been doing. I want to start kind of at the beginning of this particular journey, this particular chapter in your life. So your last yeah. fight was in, in 2011. That was your last fight in the UFC. It was your last pro MMA fight. When did you start to transition yes. over from pro fighter to coach? So I have always taught martial arts, and I've always, like, so... Um, how, how would you say this? Like we, I came up through like the, like not quite like the first crop of guys, right? But the second crop maybe where we were coaching each other all the time. Like I traveled to Japan. I was coach Dwayne Ludwig. I went to a bunch of his strike, strike force fights. Uh, we all coached each other all the time. So uh, there was never really a, a separation, I would say. And then once I retired, it was just, all right, here we go. Okay. So you knew once you were done that this would be the next step for you? Okay, so the so maybe not just maybe not just this, right? Because we have uh, seven schools out here in the Denver metro area. So the day, so my that last fight was on a, a Saturday night. On Tuesday, I was looking at the building to purchase the where the current Denver space is now. Wow! And why did you retire? You are either going to be a world champion, you know, or yeah. you're going to make millions and millions of dollars. Uh, neither one of those paths, those paths were over for me. I tried really, really hard. Like I, I gave it my all and um, I came up short and uh, we, we come up short sometimes that that happens. And you, what are you going to do? You have to take your, the lessons from your attempts and your short shortcomings and you have to move that to whatever is the, the next chapter of your life mm. because fighting is so hard, but you know, right? Like, Fighting, fighting is so hard. Like, I mean, people are giving Cowboy grief right now because, you know, they're saying all this craziness about Cowboy. But look, Cowboy doesn't have to do that yet. He, you know, as Connor says, he had a red panty night. So, yeah, we, I mean, you want to offer me five, you know, five, ten million, two million, three million bucks to take a fight right now? Sure, sign me up. But uh, that wasn't my pay grade. Okay. Um, and of course, you fought in the UFC multiple times, I believe six times. We're on the yeah. Ultimate Fighter Season 8. Uh, had a nice yeah. solid run there, but you recognized that the time was up for you. And I'm wondering, as a guy who's been in the cage and has fought on big shows, but also now cornering people on the biggest of shows, which, do you, like you said, tough, but which is tougher for you to be the active fighter in there or to be on the outside looking in and not be, you know, being able to prepare the fighter for the battle, but then when it comes to battle, you can't do much. So it's two different things, right? Um, when you are young, when you are when you are the fighter, you are nervous for a really long time, right? You have this eight, twelve week camp, whatever it is that you do, where you're like, man, uh, holy, uh, holy, holy shit, I'm really scared right now, and uh, so you're used to that, and and you're kind of used to the nerves. So like, there's that hard part of it, but then there's the hard. But as the coach, you're not really that nervous until. Boom. Okay. Walk. Gotcha. And you're like, whoa, whoa. And it gets kind of like, you know, because you're like, whoa, I don't have any control over what's going to happen right now. This is this is 100% out of my control. Uh, so you, you mentioned a couple of things there, which made me think yeah. about some of the things you've talked about. So like I said, you, you have a podcast. Uh, you also yes. have written a book. Remind me the name of the, the book and the podcast. Same name, right? Same name. The Gospel of Fire. You Go know, The Gospel of Fire. And it's not, it's not a religious thing, mm -hmm. but my, like my gospel is the fire. 
you've talked openly about uh, suffering from anxiety, depression, things like that. When was it at its worst for you? And and I appreciate you being so open about this because I think not enough people are open about this. But for you, when was it the toughest for you dealing with those particular things? So let's let's go back to when I retired. Right? Okay. Um, and that's I think that was kind of a lead off to what happened five years later. Um, you know, you retire, you, you're uh, you're trying to be the baddest dude in the world. You're trying to be John Jones, right? Undefeated. And uh, the results, when you when you search Wikipedia, they don't lie. Like they are what they are, <laughs> um, and you're not. So uh, I occupied my time with uh, building the school, building the businesses, and, and and doing that. And then, like you know, had some success with that. Uh, and and then all of my insecurities about my life, you know, about who I was, and and all of these things, they came to a screaming halt five years later. You know, with with no reason. Like my life was fine. Um, I have a great family. You know, uh, uh, the, the the schools weren't crashing or any of that. Um, and then I, I, you know, it was at its worst in 2016. Five nights no sleep whatsoever. And then, uh, man, it was. Uh, I call it the. I call it my dance with the devil. The devil. The devil took its claws and it put them right in me. And he's. He said, "We're gonna sit here for a while until uh, until you do some work, man." Wait, five nights, no sleep? Yeah, man, may- maybe four hours total over the over those five nights. W- what was going on? I was petrified. I don't know. Couldn't sleep. Petrified that I wasn't going to sleep, and then I, I like self self fulfilling prophecy, right? I, I made I made it happen. Pacing around the house, crying. <sighs> you name it, man. You name it. It was uh. It was uh. It was yeah. It was the worst worst one of the worst five days of my life. Was it because you were afraid of the future? You were afraid of no longer being an active yeah. fighter? All, all anxiety. No, I wasn't afraid of not being an active fighter. Like I was already, that was five years. I was already out of that five years. It was just all of my insecurities about what, like why I got into fighting and, and the things that have happened to me uh, through my life and my childhood growing up and all, the, and, and like all of that had to do with why I became a fighter. And, and then, like, you know, you, you build up this ego around, like, okay, I'm going to be the baddest dude in the world. And then you don't become the baddest dude in the world. And, and, and some things start talking to you. And then you're not listening to them and paying attention. And uh, here you are, man. You're just, you're, you know, for me, mine, mine portrays as anxiety. So that's, that's how it went. Some people are depression. How did you, how did you get help? Did someone, did, did someone take you somewhere? Did you, did you figure it out yourself? No, how did you yeah. get back on track? So man, uh, I'm the, there, there's nobody in the whole world that's luckier than me. I, I truly believe that because I, I have the best set of people in my life that, that will, uh, that will do anything for me. They, they'll, they'll do whatever is necessary. And, you know, one of them happens to be a doctor. And like, so like that, that last, that last day of no sleep when I, when I got up, um, I called him and he, he just had some medical solutions to get me some sleep that night you know, and then some long-term solutions. And then I, I got into therapy and man, what it was mostly, bro. Um, cause it's not like, uh, it's not like that demon of no sleep, uh, left that stayed around for about six to nine months. And, you know, for the next two months, uh, I'd say probably a month, month to two. I mean, I had this group of three friends, bro, that I, I would take my sleeping pills. I would have a panic attack that they didn't work within five minutes. I'd run down to my basement crying and then I would get on the phone with them and they would just like talk to me. And sometimes that would put me to sleep, just like the sound of their voice. And then sometimes we'd be up all night, man. And now at, at this time, you have kids, right? I have kids. Yeah. I have and kids. I have two kids. Do yeah. they see you in this state? They see me in this state. My one was only two years old, so I don't know what he remembers. But yeah. uh, my six-year-old, my older, he was, you know. Look, it would start, the whole process would start is, is I would get in his bed with him, like, you know, because he, he and I have, he and I are the same beast, you know, he's, he's my mini, uh, he looks exactly like me, he's, he's me on steroids, like, he's, he's better than me, and his anxiety is here already, Oh, but, you know, he's, at least he's got me, right, because I know what this is like, um, so he would, I would get in his bed, and he would, we, we call it hand, you know, and he would just take his hand, and it would, he would put it on my back, and then he would fall asleep, and then I would get out of the bed, and then you know, not fall asleep. And so you mentioned that this was 2016. Here we are, three and a half or so, yeah. four years later. 
How are you dealing with that now? Oh, man, it's my best friend, Ariel. What is your best friend? My anxiety. How so? It is, it is, it is the beast that took me into the fire. And, and what came, what I am, the, the person that I am trying to be and the message that I am trying to spread is, is 100% because of that six to nine months. And, um, and yeah, uh, I don't ever like it when it's here to say hi in the moment. Right. Like that is really terrible. But when it is afterwards, I, I know what I tell myself is like, yo, OK, whatever comes from this, it will, you, you, it's going to be a better version of you. You know, like whatever comes from this will be a better version of you. You'll you'll understand you better. So it does pop up from time to time. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, I just have to say hi. I never wanted to go away anymore. You know, I just say hi to it like the sleep thing. Every night, Ariel, I mean, this sounds stupid, you know, um, I, I get in bed, uh, you know, my wife and I like whatever we watch, like a Netflix or something, and then like show her all over and fall to sleep and I'll put law and order on and then I'll just be like, okay, you're going to stay awake all night and this is every night and, uh, and then I, uh, you know, I start to get tired and then I say, okay, you can close your eyes during the commercial and then, so I close my eyes during the commercial and then, uh, yeah, eventually I'm like, oh shit, wait a minute. And I wake back up. I was like, oh, the, the, the show's on. I'm supposed to have my eyes open. And then it just like puts me, I reverse engineer the process. Wow. Every I, night? I, every night. I take, I take control of the process. The plan is no sleep. I'm Man. not sitting there trying to sleep. Every night, this is the process. By the way, why Law and Order? I don't know, man. Couldn't tell you. I, li just... I like it. Okay. You know, it's, it numbs my mind, you know? And uh, I guess you don't know. Yeah, it numbs my mind. And that's, I don't care. Do, do, have you accepted that this is your, your life? This is your reality? No, no, no. This is my reality right now. Who knows what? I, I, I try not to think too much about what you're like. When you to do that, you say these two really terrible words called what if. And you put them back to back together. Um, and for me and for people that suffer, this is, these are the worst two words that you can use at the same time in the English language. It's just boop, downhill. Do your fighters know about this? Oh, yeah. I talk about it all the time. I wrote a book about it. Right. I, I just didn't know if any of them, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. I talk, I talk about it. I talk about it all the time. I think I'm a better coach because of it. Why? You know? I'm never, I, I've, I've, what this whole process has made me realize is that uh, it's never so much about me, and it's it's about we, and um, and the and the and I heard a really good quote the other day. I gave I gave some of my students their black belts, you know, and uh, they're older guys. And whenever older guys like 40s and 50s get their black belts, they they have like this little breakdown, because you know there's some 20 year old blue belt or purple belt that just destroys them, right? Because you're 40 or 50, and um, so they always think they're not deserving and yada yada. And um, my, what my student told me, he was like, man, he's this, it's, a South, it's an African quote. And it's, uh, I am because we are, and we are because I am. And it just, we need each other. And we need all of each other. Like the good and the bad. You need to sit there in the good moments. You need to be there in the bad moments. And, and that, is, that is the message of Elevation Fight Team. You know, and, and all of Easton Training Center because Elevation Fight Team is a part of, of Easton Training Center, the forward facing part where you get to see Corey and Curtis and Neil and Drew and, and all of these other guys and Gaethje now, right? All of these other guys that, that come into the school, man. And um, my goal, I mean, like, look, I hope, I hope they get, I hope we have two straps by the end of the year. You know, I think, I think we could do it. That would be amazing. That would be really, really amazing. But what would be even more amazing for me, to be super honest with you, is uh, that all of the guys on the team that we have now, that they have amazing lives. Even the ones you don't know. Even the ones that sit there and show up and train with the Corys and the Curtises and the Drews and the Neils. Because that's just part of what it is, right? You don't, everyone doesn't get to be Tom Brady. But Tom Brady needs those guys. So, um, Man, I, I hope my, my goal is, is to, to spread as much love and positivity in the world so that uh, through martial arts, 
you know, through martial arts so that uh, we can all live better lives because I think it's the best way to spread the, mo the most positive message. I, I, I relate very much to a lot of the things that you're saying. I, I've talked about my anxiety and all that stuff, and so yeah. I appreciate someone in your position talking about it as well. I also learned recently that we have a little more in common. Uh, you, you, half of your side of your family is Jewish, and this blows my mind. I never knew about this um, because yeah, I've covered a lot of your fights. I've known you for years. Yeah. Your grandparents on your mother's side survived the Holocaust. Is that accurate? Yeah, there she is. That's my grandmother right there. That's my baba. Like, and the guy on the right there, that's my Zaidi, you know, in Yiddish, Bob and Zaidi. Um, I had no yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Where, my mom sent me these pictures the other day. Incredible. Where, where were they during the Holocaust? They were in Poland. Okay. They were, they were in Poland, man. Um, and so much of what is great about me and what is, and, and, all, and all of my like anxiety and stuff like that probably comes from that growing up. You know, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Like, there's nothing I would change. Like, I, I lived in that house. Like, I, I lived with my parents. You know, uh, I, I had a great, I had two great parents. Uh, another reason why I say no one's luckier than me is, is because of that. And, and I got to, man, I have a very deep connection to that suffering in the Holocaust because um, I lived with them. And you couldn't walk in that house without understanding, like my friend, like many people weren't allowed. Only really one of my friends ever came over that house because it just wasn't allowed. Um, Why? Uh, uh, because man, the people you're, because people are going to turn you into the Nazis, man. Okay. If they see where you live and what you have. This is what I grew up with. Wow. Uh, they're, 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 they're coming for us again. They're, they're, they're going to come for us again. And if they see anything that you have, they'll, they'll very quickly turn you in. So, um, yeah, that that was that was how it happened. Were they together during the Holocaust, or did they meet no, afterwards? No, they they met afterwards. Okay, they met afterwards. My my grandfather was the only survivor of uh, nine brothers and sisters, a mother and dad, aunts and uncles. Wow, holy smokes! Yep. So what about your grandmother? Uh, her and uh, her mother and her sister, her oldest sister, survived. Her youngest sister, uh, whew, terrible story how how she died. Okay. Have you ever been to uh, the concentration camps? Uh, no, man. I don't really need to go. Okay. I, I've been I've been to the concentration camps with them. You know, like everyone says that I need to go to understand the suffering. I don't I don't need to go to understand the suffering, man. Like they, uh, I got I got filled in with with all the details. Are Are they still alive? No, man. They uh, they passed. My grandmother passed in 2000, and my grandfather passed in 2010. He saw everyone die, man. Like other than me, my mom, and uh, and my sister, because you know my mom had a brother, and my my uncle ended up dying too. And my grand my grandfather had to witness all of that. And then like right at the end of his life, you know, he got to meet my little boy, like my firstborn child. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that was the last time I saw him. Are, are you religious? Um, no. No, I, 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 am, I believe that there's something greater than us. Um, I believe, or I believe in the possibility. I'm a, I'm a possibility in Ariel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, anything is possible. I don't believe what we've been told so far is possible, but uh, everything else could be. And, um, but I, I, but I, 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 I used to not like religious religions. And now, man, look. <sighs> To get through the day, you do what you got to do, man. People do what they got to do to get through the day. And if you can do that without hurting anybody or harming anybody, uh, then you, you do it. You do it because uh, life's a fight. Henzo says it best. Life's a fight. Everyone's fighting something. So who am I to say this is true or that's true or I don't know, man. Like I, I, I don't even really think about it anymore. My, my, my job is to... Uh, first and foremost, uh, raise these two little boys that are uh, in in my control, you know, un under my wing right now, uh, to the best of that ability to uh, to then be the best husband that I can to my wife, and then to I, I have students. I have a lot of students, you know, at the schools here, and my my goal, and I include my fight. I don't call my fighters fighters. They're not fighters. We're all students, you know. Um, my goal is to uh, be the leader of that and, and put out 
the best positive message that I can so that they can go out and live the best lives. So they, I call it find your power. So that everybody that, that comes around, that walks in the door of Easton or hears the message on the podcast or wherever, can go out there and, and find their power. You know, and I don't know what anybody's power is going to be. But, uh, yeah, you know, so, I mean, I, like these guys, uh, like all the guys you just showed, Eric, uh, Curtis and, and Drew and Corey, like, man, like they're, they're killing it, right? They're killing it. Uh, and and we, we have a team of guys that are killing it. And it's, uh, it's an amazing thing what's happened with Elevation. Yeah, it's a great story. And I think that you guys should be talked about a little more and there should be more attention on you. I know you're not seeking that, but it's amazing what you guys have been doing. I think Corey is on the verge of a title shot. I think what happened to him uh, a couple weeks ago was not very fair, to put it mildly. Curtis is doing incredible stuff. He's very close. Uh, and, and Dober looked amazing in his fight at 246. Can you just describe the, the, like the mood of the team right now with everyone peaking and everyone doing such great things? Gaethje, as you mentioned. What is it like in the gym these days? The mood of the team is never different. The mood of the team is always the same because we, we, we have a common goal that is, that is much th – their, their small goal is champion. Right? Their small goal is world champion, but that's not the goal. That's not what we're doing. You know? and, I, and I guess maybe we don't deserve everything yet, and I understand that because we haven't made a champion. Like, we don't have one. Uh, and, but like I said, man, like the, ev everyone understands the path. The path is, is an amazing life. You know? and, and that amazing life is going to come in so many different ways. It's like right now when you have that calmness about it, like that, because that's 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 what we have on the team is we have this togetherness, because we have so many coaches. Like I know you're you're interviewing me right now, but I'm I'm only the head. I, I don't I'm only the head coach of like the team. Uh, each, each fighter has his guy or his coach. Like Curtis has Vinny, and Curtis, you know, Vinny Lopez is is amazing. Cody Donovan is is Curtis's head coach as well. Like he's there. These guys are amazing. Like and we're not in this like. Like we just do it different, Ariel. We we like, uh, like the gym doesn't make any money, or the team doesn't make any money from from Curtis. Like only his guys do, and I so like I get, and I know this is a like different in the fight game. Like I get financially nothing from Curtis, not a penny, and seventy percent of his practices occur in my facilities. Mm. But that I don't care. Like that's not why I'm doing this. Like, that is not why I'm doing this at all. So, uh, and, you know, it, but, and we, we just remove, like, look, everyone pays. I'm not saying that the guys don't pay. But uh, we just remove that, like, because it just separate, it just destroys teams. Money destroys it, right? Like, you got to pay your, you got to pay the gym and the coach and this and your manager. And, man, you know, like, I think we all have this rule, like, I don't even, I don't, we don't, I don't even think I take that much money from the guys until, until they have a hundred grand in the bank. And when they wow. have a hundred grand in the bank, then we can talk. Well, keep doing your thing. I my take man. a little bit. Yeah, no, you know, I take a little bit. Right. And First. all the coaches, all the coaches do it differently, you know, but like our team is so special because we've removed that money thing and we are literally there for the guys and we, we love them and we want them to be happy. I wish you guys uh, nothing but the best. Continued success. And uh, what a story you have. If anyone wants to uh, listen to your podcast, again, Gospel of Fire, the book, Gospel of Fire, wherever you can get podcasts, right? Wherever you can get podcasts. Look, everything you can get to from my Instagram, too. Okay. It's at Fire Marshall 205 uh, uh, at Elevation Fight Team as well. Um, you can hit any of us up. We'll respond. Uh, come if, uh, if you want to come check us out, come check us out. There's no, there's no barrier of entry. Awesome. Um, so, yeah. Thank you, Elliot. I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. it, man. I appreciate you. you. Do such a great thing for MMA, man. Like just getting the word out there, and and like your honorable mentions, like that's great. Like guys doing great things in the sport. Like that is, because uh, that that's what that's that's the message, right? Positivity. Yes, sir. Hello, everyone. It's Ariel Hawani. I just came here to thank you for watching our ESPN YouTube channel. It's the best. You know what else is the best? The ESPN app. You can get highlights, analysis, all that stuff and more. And if you want premium content and live streaming sports, there's only one place for all of that. It's ESPN+. Plus.